So once me and a friend of mine who's training a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, we spent a lot of time together. He was, uh, he was teaching me and presenting me Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I was presenting him Aikido. And uh, I was telling him a lot of stories that I've came across myself or seen uh, a lot in the area that I live in, in Lithuania and the country, but also I heard stories from other countries or witnessed some of them. That in Aikido, despite the fact that it's a officially non-competitive martial art where uh, the founder himself would say that Aikido is meant uh, to bring people together, not, not for them to compete, uh, there's a lot of competition in Aikido. And maybe it's not, it's not very obvious, it's a lot of times between different dojos. For example, in my country, since I'm running a dojo uh, and uh, I've had a chance to, to talk some, with some of the dojo shows, uh, it would be a common sight that you know, one organization would be opposing another one. Even in our city, there's another club who, who, with, with which there is a tension. And we definitely don't bring any tension from our side ourselves. But but uh, when I reached out and I said, well, you know, let's cooperate, let's let's be friends, let's do some projects together, it never worked. And uh, and the stories that I hear and uh, the feeling that I get that they don't really like us. Uh, so there's a lot of that kind of competition. And uh, that friend of mine was started to ask himself, so why is there so much competition in Aikido? And he thought a lot and then a few days later he came, uh, he came into one of our discussions and said, you know, I think it's because there's no real competition, there's no, um, there's no uh, tournament fights, tournaments. And I thought for a moment, I thought that's, that's a pretty good idea, that's, there's some truth. And we discussed, discussed about that and the, the true side of it was that, in, for example, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as far as I've got to experience it, if you claim to be the best, if you claim to be the best, mm, somebody else is going to come and he's going to fight you on one on one uh, in a preset preset set of match and if the other guy is better he's gonna kick your ass so there's it's very easy in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to become humble because if someone is better than you it's gonna be obvious he's gonna kick your butt and I experienced that myself that brought some humility to me too which I appreciate but then you can't in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it's hard to boast that you're better than others and uh, to have that kind of mentality but in Aikido but in Aikido, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I keep hearing a lot of times when, when different senseis, different dojo chos would say, we're the good ones and they're wrong, uh, that we are doing it right and they suck. I'm, uh, I'm the best instructor and they, what, what they do is crap. And uh, that's, that's kind of the focal point of our, that was the focal point of our discussion. And uh, what's interesting that I realized that there's some truth to that, that if there would be competition or tournaments, um, then you know you couldn't just claim in Aikido it's basically in Aikido it's easy to claim that you're the best because there's no real way to to compare you know it's it's quite a Aikido is quite subtle and uh, and it's uh, it's hard to compare that subtle level so it's easy to make an assumption that you know I'm better he sucks there's no good way to to really check who is better but then uh, uh, but then that was just the first part of the story where where I realized there's some truth but it's not a final answer and it doesn't really actually matter. And the second part of the story is that when my friend, a few days later again, my friend came back and we had another discussion and, and he said, you know what, I thought more about Aikido and why, why that kind of a competitive, we're good, you're bad mood is there, and the kind of discrimination between each other. And he said, you know, it's because I think it's because they're human. And I thought, that's even better. You know, that's even more true. Uh, and we, again, discussed about it, and I thought it on myself, on my own level. And I think that's actually m so much more important than uh, making some kind of a competition. And trust me, I'm completely not into, uh, into saying that Aikido should have more competition or tournaments. I think that would ruin it even more. But... But the realization that, you know, that kind of quote of my friend, that there's that competitiveness in Aikido because, uh, 
the people who are doing it are human, it's actually very true and very sincere. What is meant by that is that in our conditioning from very early age, we are taught to compete. We are taught to strive to become better than others, to seek out our goals despite no matter what, uh, what we have to suffer through. So from a very early age we are taught to compete, we are taught to strive to achieve our goals despite uh, what we have to do and there's even a saying that you have to, even if you have to go over the heads of other people, you will, you st it doesn't matter, you still have, have to do it. And that kind of um, conditioning is very strong in us and it actually, it obviously goes back into Aikido too. And our sensei you know, he would, he would stress a lot of different things. He would say, true victory is victory over yourself, that there shouldn't be no competition in Aikido, we shouldn't compare each other. But the fact that we are human, uh, we have that human conditioning from an early age, is making it difficult. And I can't say that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not touched by that either. It's, I can feel it sometimes come up in my own system when you know somebody criticizes uh, the style that I do or criticize me as an instructor it's hard that feeling of wanting to protect myself or protect my style protect my instructor protect my organization that definitely comes up and that desire to oppose and it's hard to not go there and even on the mat too that that happens as well we in the very first video I put out on this channel uh, called the dark side of Aikido. I talked a lot about that in terms of how much we like to compete and compare each other on the mat, especially if different styles come up, but even senior and uh, less senior students. So it's definitely there, but the question that I was asked and that came up was how to, how to deal with that. And I think, you know, we could try to make some rules, we could try to create a different um, frame of work and, and, and I feel a sensei in a sense tried to do that and some of his students continued to try to put that frame of okay there's no competition in Aikido means there's no tournaments but as you see removing the tournaments removing just an external uh, just an external uh, part of it is not necessarily the answer and it doesn't mean that putting it back either would be an answer I think it's in the end it's all about working with ourselves and it may sound a bit cliche it may, may sound a bit it may sound a bit simple, you know, change yourself, change the world, etc. But I feel it's true, and I feel that on my practice, on my personal level, it's true too. That uh, first of all, we have to accept who we are and how we are. First of all, we have to accept that you know, what, what I'm inspired about these days is that there's a natural flow to life. There's, uh, you know, birds know when to fly where, trees. Uh, know how to change its form based on the weather, you know, seasons change, our body changes, there's cycles, it's, uh, the universe is very intelligent and even about that Osensi spoke too. And when you realize that that universe is very intelligent, you realize that there's a certain goal, a certain role we have to play in it too, that life wants us, there's an intelligence that wants us to do certain things and we can either oppose it or we can either uh, go with it. And Osensei said that too, there's a phrase of him that if you're, going, if you're going to oppose the universe, it's going to crush you, if you're going to go along the universe, it's going to support you. And he was very inspired about that and he was showing that through an example. And that's living by that principle. Uh, he realized that competition doesn't work. There's no competition when you work with life. You realize that you are a part of the whole, that you realize that um, everything that is around you, and again, I'll quote Osensi here too, everything is one family. We're all one family. And when you realize that, the concept of competition just drops. And when where people are afraid, and which, which is crazy and funny, uh, because people are afraid and believe that if you're going to remove competition, uh, you're going to remove your uh, source of motivation. That if you're not going to compete, you're not going to want to evolve or move further. And on a certain level it's true, but only on the level of meaningless things. You, If you will stop competing, you will uh, stop having the desire to achieve uh, the wrong things. You won't need 
a better car to prove that you're better. You won't need more money. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to have more money or you won't be able to appreciate a better car better or, or more money, but you will start to realize how meaningless these things are because they're motivated by the wrong things. And so, so that kind of motivation drops, but what's great is that another source of motivation comes up. And that source of motivation is a very pure one. Uh, that's the sense of our purpose, uh, raison d'être. Uh, in that moment, you realize that there's something you really desire from the core of yourself to do. And, uh, and that in that, there's no competition. It's not in order to prove something to someone. It's not in order to, to become better. It's driven not by wanting to overcome someone or something. It's just, uh, it's purely in the moment. It's something that you want to do at this moment uh, without caring about the results. And when you're in that mood, when you're in that mode, in that flow, uh, the desire to compete just drops. There's no reason for you to compete because you have nothing to prove. And I feel that uh, first of all, Osensi was very much into that. He was living it all the time and he was talking about that a lot. And I feel that if we want to remove competition from Aikido, that's where we have to go. We have to listen to the words of Osensi, what he was inspired to do, why he created Aikido, the, the way of non-resisting, non-resisting your purpose, non-resisting life, non-resisting others, uh, non-resisting different situations. And when you're in that, competition is gonna become uh, less and less important. You won't have anything to prove to other dojos. It won't matter to you if other dojos support you or not, if others approve you or not. I feel that's a very great source of power. And Aikido itself, uh, first of all, it is a way of non-resisting. It teaches you how not to resist. So that gives you a sense of understanding, okay, there is actually a way to, um, to improve your ability to not resist, to, to discover your purpose through Aikido. And so that's why Aikido is already very powerful. It has that frame already which is supporting the non-competition, uh, the working with yourself rather than against others. So the frame is there, but it won't work if you are not going to get involved into that process yourself. So I'll be very happy to talk more about uh, that way of non-competing, that way of uh, listening to life and uh, fulfilling yourself, uh, living with life, not against life. Uh, and personally, that helped me tremendously. Uh, if I wouldn't have followed that, I wouldn't have uh, became Uchideshi, I wouldn't have opened my dojo. My, my dojo wouldn't have worked if I wouldn't have followed this non-resisting path. So, and even more, many more examples would be there. So we can talk about that more, if you're, especially if you're interested, and to how to live that, how to trust in, in that. But we'll leave it for another moment. Before we finish up though, uh, first of all I wanted to apologize that for a few weeks there were no videos. First of all we had a couple of weeks of vacation at the end of the summer, but actually that was not the only case. Uh, so right now we're filming on a Sunday, so tomorrow Monday, it's probably already past when the video is uploaded. But we're going to have the grand opening of our second dojo in Shule. So we're going to have two dojos, but it was a lot of work to, to get it ready. Uh, it's going to be more directed by my wife Mila and there's going to be a lot of yoga in it but also Aikido, Ninjutsu, it's a long story. But two dojos right now so very happy to share that with you and that we're going to open it so I'm going to have more time to edit videos, put more videos on the first channel, more videos here so we're going to see each other more. Also uh, what I wanted to share is that especially since there's um, there's a second dojo now, so there's a lot of classes. Basically, we have uh, classes six days per week. So every day Aikido, every day yoga, there's meditation, morning weapon classes. So it's a packed, it's a very busy schedule. And we also have a living space in our first dojo. So many of you connect with me and, uh, and say that you're happy to, to see these videos. To, uh, and I'm very happy to know that you're benefiting from them. But uh, if you ever want to come, uh, Lithuania is uh, it's a much cheaper country than most of Western European countries, so, uh, so the expenditures are not expensive here. 
uh, basically I just wanted to invite you if you want to, if you would like to be in Chideshi even for one week, two weeks or longer, live in the dojo, train every day, we could have these talks on a personal level. Uh, the space is there, uh, there is a, s a bit of a fee, but um, for a month it's probably going to be around 200 euros for all the training, for uh, living in the dojo, and uh, the food is fairly cheap as well, so I think 400 euros, so that's about 400 dollars, for one month, training, food, lodging, everything should be enough. So if you're interested in that, connect up with me. You can write me on Facebook, write me in the, in the comments here. Uh, I'd be happy to have you as Nuchideshi and have a could work. We could work on a personal level. That'd be great. And the last thing I want to share is that in a few weeks, uh, October 1st, 3rd, uh, my, my main instructor, Patrick Cassidy Sensi, is coming to Lithuania to teach a seminar. Uh, if you want to come uh, and participate in the seminar, um, also I'll uh, offer free lodging um, in the dojo, so you won't have to pay for that. All other expenditures are not much as well, and the seminar is only 90 euros too. So if you have the chance to come, you're really welcome. Uh, you can come a few days earlier, so we could get to know each other personally. You can stay a few days longer. Uh, the space is there, so just wanted to invite you. And yeah, I'm looking forward to meet everyone, not through the um, computer screen. So all in all, this is Rokas, and I'll see you in another video.